Hey guys, it's Vivids and welcome back to another video. Now this is going to be another episode of my How I series and this is going to be showing you guys how I train, uh, not, not how I train, how I do my daily sinkholes. Now sinkholes are very, very beneficial if you do them correctly and if you manage to get in the top three spots. And um, by top three spots, I mean, you know, actually I'll explain that later. But every day you can do a distraction and diversion called sinkholes and you can get roughly 150,000 experience in Dungeoneering. Um, well, roughly 150,000 to 200,000 dungeon near XP every single day just from doing this distraction and diversion. Now, what I'll do is with sinkholes, seeing as it, uh, you can actually do it twice a day, I'm not sure if I've said that already, but you can do it very, like you can do it after each other. So for example, if it's 8.30, because for me it sets every hour on the on the half hour. So if it's uh, eight, if it's 8.30, I can do it. If it's 9.30, I can do another sinkhole. If it's 10.30, I can do another sinkhole. So as soon as it hits, as soon as it hits that half an hour, I can run down to, uh, I can go to Demonheim through the use of my Ring of Kinship, run a little bit west to the sinkholes dude. I'm just gonna call him the sinkholes dude. I don't know his name, and you know have a little chat to him if you've never done it before, and then teleport. Uh, right click him and hit teleport which will teleport you right to the sinkhole's entrance and generally sometimes the sinkhole won't appear until you know 10 minutes after it's been called in the chat and you know you have to make sure you're looking out for the chat in the game chat so make sure you have your game chat oh no I think it's the gate yeah the game the game filter as on you always have to have that as on to get the notification of sinkholes unless you know exactly when the sinkhole is going to appear but as soon as that notification alerts you it's uh, you know 10 minutes until the actual sinkhole appears so you can use that you can use the guy twice a day to teleport to the sinkhole's entrance and basically uh, you know you can just use the sinkhole. The main gist of the sinkhole is basically a massive rush fest. The person that's going to get the most experience is one, whoever used the cards at the very very end the most effectively and two, whoever can rush through the dungeon um, in the most effective manner. So there's a point system in sinkholes basically, whoever gets the most points gets first, whoever gets the most points gets last and whoever gets the in, in, in between points gets you know between uh, second and fourth position and obviously you want to hit that number one position because uh, it's all every time you're going to hit that number one position you'll always get the huge lamp guaranteed but someone can obviously take it off you with a card and then you can probably steal it back if you have a good enough card. But basically, but the combat totems you're going to be picking up are from the all, all the monsters you kill. So as soon as you kill a monster, pick up the combat totem. That's worth 30 points. An exploratory totem is when you ed enter a room, it just spawns on the floor. If you pick that up, you get t uh, 20 points. Well, if you deposit it, you get 20 points. And every resource is worth 10 points. If I've got to collect ores throughout the dungeon, and I collect some novite ores, and I collect some promethium ores, if I collect one novite ore, I'll get 10 points. If I collect one promethium ore, I'll get 10 points. So it doesn't really matter of the tier of resource just as long as you get those um, amount of resources and occasionally you'll see some resources that are glowing now they're worth double and what I mean by double is instead of mining one resource you get two so essentially that's worth double the points but it's really really important that you deposit all of your totems and resources as quickly as you can because as soon as the uh, resource cap so for example if I collect if well if if the team collects 15 exploratory totems. Uh, there's going to be a little tick next to the exploratory totems, the top left of the screen, if you'll see that here. Uh, well, it's not going to happen now, but you'll see it later. As soon as that little box is ticked, and we've got 15 out of 15 exploratory totems, um, every single exploratory totem deposited after that will count as zero points. So that's why you've got to deposit every everything you can as quickly as you can to get those points on the board as quickly as you can um, to, to lock in that first position. Now, I was lucky enough to get first position in, you know, this first sinkhole, but in the second sinkhole, I'm not sure if I'm going to show it. I actually get second place, and I, I got second place by about 100 points. And that was uh, because the other dude that was beating me, he managed to kill the he, he managed to kill the monsters more effectively than me. He picked up more totems than me, and, it, you know, essentially did more stuff than me and beat me, what a little bitch. But I use ranger in the sinkholes, and that's because, uh, for one, you can stand away from the monsters, and you can hit them before... Uh, a melee -er, and you can use mage as well but I just use range because I find the DPS is fantastic and you can also use the ability ricochet and if you're using magic you can use the chain ability because that, that hits multiple targets and you want to be killing as many targets as you can so that's why you're going to be using the ricochet ability uh, more often than not but apart from that, you just have to use the most offensive abilities to get those combat kills and pick up those combats straight away. But then comes the cards, which, you know, one may argue is the most confusing part of Sinkos, but it's it's really not if you, you know, if you've done Sinkos for a little while and you know kind of what the best cards are, you know, what the worst cards are. Now, I'm, I'm not going to tell you what the best cards are or the worst cards are. Uh, I'm going to tell you my favorite ones. 
and the reason why. And I'm not going to cover every single card because that's just ridiculous. But I've got them, I've got them all here. So there's a there's a beguiling smoke devil. There's a cloning mosquito. Consistent yak. Preening ibis. Protecting titan. Uh, reversing phoenix. Trading Le trading leech. Thieving locust. Scavenging meerkat. Trading mantis and whimsical bunyip. Now my favorite personally is, is the scavenging meerkat meerkat because you can get like. You can get two different lamps, or you can get a lamp and a token, I believe. So, you know, you can you always get more XP with a scavenging meerkat, I find. Uh, but another good one is consistent yak. So, if you're coming last, um, you, you're guaranteed a medium lamp if you use a consistent yak pouch. The cloning mosquito is basically your chest will become a copy of the rank below you. So, if you're first position and the dude uh, in fourth position steals from you in fifth through the use of a trading leech or a trading mantis, you clone, you know, you clone the huge lamp, so you get the huge lamp as well as him getting the huge lamp. So it's a win-win for both of you guys. Um, but they're the main kind of cards. I'm not going to confuse you with all the other cards because some of them are just, uh, I don't even like some of them. But they're the main few cards that you get. So just make sure you pick up as many cards as you can. You have a maximum of five cards you're allowed in your inventory. And if you have duplicates of cards, just delete the duplicates because it means nothing. So make sure you have five different cards if you can. And uh, if you're lucky enough to get multiple cards, just delete the crappy ones and, you know, keep the new ones. Oh, not the new ones, the better ones. But that's basically all I have for this video to, uh, today, guys. If you if I missed anything, which I'm sure I have, please leave it in the comments below because, you know, generally people that watch the videos and leave comments are smarter than the people that, uh, you know, make the videos. So hopefully that's the case in this video. And leave me some smart comments down in the comments below. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and uh, share with all your friends. And be sure to check out my uh, newest series on YouTube, which is um, Why Australians Don't PVM. It's an absolutely hilarious series. So be sure to check that one out. Uh, but apart from that, guys, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.